So talking about Teams and the integration engine. All right, so our Teams integration is really focused around enabling ticket collaboration. And it could be of many different kinds of tickets as I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. And it's going to allow your agents to collaborate in Teams where maybe they're, I mean, they're probably, if you're using Teams, they're probably in Teams all the time anyway. So it allows them to do their collaboration with other other agents and maybe with people who do not normally log into Smacks in Teams, but it ensures that that information is captured as part of the, the Smacks ticket and ensures that your governance processes that are defined in, in Smacks are being adhered to. Um, it also provides an easy way for either uh, non-regular Smacks users or maybe users who are people in your organization who do not have access to Smacks um, to participate in the collaboration and for those comments to be captured and recorded in the Smacks record. So the general flow is we take data from Smacks and we pass it over to Teams to start a discussion. We have a link from Teams back to the Smacks record and you can link from the Smacks record to Teams as well. And we update the record with the comments that are made in Teams. Those are kind of the key points. Let's take a look at kind of the overall flow of how you set it up and then use it for a generic integration. So we start here with tasks for the tenant admin. So that the tenant admin or the implementer is going to be the one that configures the Teams integration and then the scenarios underneath that. Uh, for example, for a major incident use case, virtual cab use case, as we'll talk about. Then he's going to register the Teams channel subscription, and that's going to allow um, Smacks to receive updates from Teams. And then we need to uh, say when we're going to utilize it. So inside Smacks, you configure a business rule in Studio to make a call to the integration. Then we jump up here to the Smacks user. When the Smacks user creates um, a record that triggers that business rule that was created, that's when we'll initiate a conversation in Teams. The data is sent to that Teams channel and we'll show how to configure that. Then there are replies to, to Teams from the Teams channel members and that uh, message is automatically recorded back in Smacks. So for example, if we had a major incident use case, so we have a critical point of sale service that has had an interruption in service, a major incident has been created that could have been created manually. It could have been um, somebody noticing that was down or based on user reports or based on some monitoring activity in Operations Bridge, it could have created there. As soon as it's flagged as a major incident, we're going to go ahead and initiate a Teams chat from the incident. That happens automatically based on that business rule that I've mentioned a couple times already. And we're going to take details from the incident and put it, push that into the channel. Then we can collaborate inside of Teams and any of the chat messages that are posted there are going to be synchronized back into Smacks. And we can also go ahead and solve, uh, initiate some actions from Smacks, including sol or from Teams to Smacks, including uh, posting a solution into the record, which will advance the workflow. So here it is kind of with a little bit of a flow chart here. So we have a major incident, we collaborate in Teams, we check, track any replies in Smacks, then we solve the incident, and then we take the standard Smacks process to review and close the incident in Smacks. Here's a screenshot showing um, an example of what the message we post over to Teams could look like and then what the replies uh, could be. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. Um, so I've already created an incident here to make it a little bit more efficient for this demonstration, but I'm only, I've configured the integration to only trigger if it's a major incident based on this major incident checkbox. So I'm gonna check that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And then I don't have a, a Teams open here in my browser yet. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I wanna go ahead and use this collaborate in Teams button and we'll go ahead and open it. And I wanna open it in the web. So use the web for this example. <clears throat> it's gonna open up Teams. And you'll see that we have 
uh, just now posted a major incident for the point of sale service not being able to be accessed. So that was just pushed over here just now. Let's go ahead and reply to that. And we'll say, um, I will begin to investigate this issue and that. And then when we'll go ahead and jump back over to uh, the Smacks now, and we'll just do a quick refresh, pick up the latest copy of the record. And if we go to discussions, we can see that uh, my comment has made it back in here. Um, and let's go back over to Teams and we'll say, Pound solution, which is a little keyword to say that I want to post a solution into, into SMAX. Um, and we'll say something simple, solved it, like I have rebooted the server, server, and now the point of sale system is back working. So we're gonna, we have a business role in uh, on the studio side that's gonna look for that keyword and then it will take this text and post it into the resolution field and that'll trigger any other, uh, everything else you have configured on the SMAC side. So again, let me just refresh to pick up the latest copy of the record. And we see that it has advanced to the review phase. So it looks like it worked. And we can see my comment from Teams has been posted into the solution field. And my uh, comment, my discussion, or yeah, my chat on the team side has been posted into the discussions area, just like the one that I did before that. So, and you can see I have con configured to include the name of the team's user in the um, in the comment. That way, if it's a user who or a, a person who doesn't have a, a Smacks. Uh, um, a Smax uh, agent record, uh, we can still see who was making the comment, even if it's somebody who isn't normally logged into to Smax. All right, so that was my incident there. And okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the presentation. Um, so major incident is probably a very uh, standard one for this type of integration, collaboration integration, but we've documented um, how to do two others. One would be around a virtual cab, so a change management use case. And that's the screenshot down here. So we have a virtual cab channel and we can post a change record or the information from a change record um, ahead of a cab meeting um, and start discussion around that change People can ask questions about it, get further information, provide clarification, all the preparation that needs to happen before you actually make an approval decision on the change can be facilitated through Teams. And again, all these comments that are being put into Teams are gonna be recorded in the change record. And then you can, the people who are set to approve can go and make their final uh, vote and approval in SMAX, approval or denial. Similarly, uh, a contract management use case around contract renewals. So um, in the contract module, as a contract gets close to um, needing to be renewed, you could push a message over into Teams and start a discussion about uh, the renewal process. Any terms need to be changed, digital, additional information that we want to get, um, anything relevant to um, getting ready for that uh, contract renewal or negotiation could be facilitated through teams and captured and tracked in SMAX. And I, uh, as we get into the configuration side, you'll see uh, you're not limited to just three these three use cases. You can dream up your own similar scenario on a different module in SMAX or right, maybe on something you've built using Studio on your own and apply the team's integration capabilities to that. So let's talk about configuration. Um, the first thing you need to do is define your team's integration and, and set up the content mapping. Um, 
So that is, of course, done in the integration section in Studio. It's all done using codeless configuration techniques that would be, will be familiar to you if you've worked in Studio before. Multiple, multiple integrations can be defined to satisfy different use cases. So let me go ahead and uh, bring up <coughs> Smacks. Uh, right, so let's go ahead and go to the mega menu. It's under administration, utilities, and then integrations. I'm going to open it in a new tab. So we still have our incident if we need to go back there. And then it's under integrations. And if we go ahead and expand the teams, we see that we have three um, scenarios under our Teams integration. So under Teams is where you'd set up the basic information about it, but I want to focus on setting up the scenario. So here is where you define uh, the name of it, which is used when you're um, selecting it in the business rule, which we'll do in a minute. You have the information about what Teams uh, channel it's going to, or what the name of the, the team name is, and then the channel within that team. So we want any messages for this scenario to go to the major incident channel under ESM collaboration. And then um, there's a, a checkbox here where we can decide whether we want to include the name of the Teams user. Um, and then we have the mapping. And this is where you set up all the information you take from the SMACS incident in this case, or from the SMACS record more generically, and post it into Teams as part of that initial um, information uh, when you start the discussion. So this information here is what you configure in that mapping. So we we see major incident hard-coded, and then we're pulling the title of the incident. We have when the incident was created. We have the description. We have the priority. We have the status, the affected service, and the category. If there are other fields that are more important to you, this is where you would go ahead and change that. Um, so you can have up to four facts and you can it can be whatever fields or information from the smack side that you want to post over there to aid the collaboration in teams all right and similarly for virtual cab yes i don't want to save that um, similarly for virtual cab this would of course be coming from a change record instead but we're going to priority risk affected service in the owning group contract negotiation, vendor, contract type, contract price, and the owner is what we've chosen to show in this sample scenario. All right, uh, let's go back to the presentation. We'll go to the next step. So that's great. I've configured a Teams integration. I've created three scenarios for virtual cab, major incident, and contract negotiations. But right now, they just sit there and do nothing. The next step is to configure when we're going to call that integration. And you do that in Studio um, using uh, a business rule type called call integration engine. And I have a, an example here of what the rule might look like. So I'm gonna say if major incident is equal to true and it has changed, because I don't wanna call teams every time we save the record and the major incident is true. So only if it's true and only if it is just being set to true, then I wanna make a call and I'm gonna call the integration engine and I'm gonna call the Microsoft Teams integration. So that's what we set up. And I'm gonna run the scenario major incident. So if I wanted to call virtual cab, I would select the virtual cab instead, but I'm calling major incident in that case. So let's go ahead and look at it in studio here. Hopefully I'm back act active. And so when you call, uh, so I'm here in studio on the incident uh, process, just on the, the main thing. Let me go ahead and clear this out and go back. All right, so you're just on at the top level. And whenever you're calling the integration, you're gonna wanna do it in the after applying changes section. So we can expand that. We can type in major incident up here, which is what I had done earlier, and it will bring us right to that rule. So this is the one that I'd put into the slide that I just showed you. So again, um, we call the integration engine using this integration. Um, I can select that from the list of what's configured in the integration section. 
And then I'm going to run the scenario and you can see in the drop down we have the three. If I added additional ones, then I would of course be able to select those here instead. I could have two different um, uh, team scenarios created that are used in the incident management module. And maybe for major incident, I go to the major incident channel and for other incidents, I post them to a different channel. It's really up to what makes sense for your organization. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize that out of the way. So that's kind of the, the second step in the configuration side.